and have green card status. But the thing most people would likely notice is overall comprehensive immigration reform. That would need to be passed by Congress. Maggi saying it could allow up to 11 million undocumented immigrants in the U.S. to eventually become citizens, a big chunk here in the Sunshine State. And we're talking about three quarters of a million people in the state of Florida, approximately, could be a little bit more, that are undocumented now who could within eight years become U.S. citizens. Anyone who's been here illegally or undocumented as of the first of this year, January 2021, could be eligible for this immigration reform. Biden's plans have received harsh criticism from Republicans who say it could encourage illegal immigration. All right, everybody, joining me right now is Greg Chin, Senior Director of Government Affairs at the American Immigration Lawyers Association. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you so much for having me. We were just having a little bit of audio issues on that last package that we played, but basically during the first 100 days of President Joe Biden's administration, he's issuing out a pretty ambitious immigration plan. Can you break down the major details for us? So on day one, just nine days ago or eight days ago, when the president was inaugurated, uh, he introduced uh, a number of executive actions, uh, which are actions that he can take as president without going to Congress. But he also sent a bill to Congress. Uh, the overall sense uh, of this package that he has uh, introduced now on immigration for his agenda uh, is to make the system more functional. Uh, that is the immigration system so that it works better for uh, the American economy, for American people and our communities, uh, and also to make it fair and accountable to America. Uh, and so that's really the goal that he's trying to achieve here. The American Immigration Lawyers Association has uh, people that are representing businesses and families across the country, and we think a fair and functional system is the right kind of solution to make the immigration um, factor. What can you tell us about this? How will this affect the administration's immigration policy moving forward? So I believe what you're referring to is uh, the Texas court's decision regarding uh, President Biden's uh, pause that he put in place on uh, deportations for a period of 100 days. Uh, so the court has now said that that pause uh, can't uh, be done. Uh, that is just one element of what President Biden has announced as a broad effort to make the immigration enforcement system fair and functional. Uh, part of this is uh, a brief pause uh, that President Biden put in place to make sure that he has the time and opportunity to reevaluate and rebalance the immigration enforcement system. Some of this is in response to what President Trump had done, uh, which was generally uh, harsh and extreme policies uh, that ended up putting families into detention and separating children from their families, that blocked people from being able to come to this country and locked many up in detention and caused some real harms uh, to families and to our communities. And so one of the goals that uh, President Biden has uh, set is that he's going to define new immigration enforcement priorities uh, to make immigration enforcement actually effective, but also at the same time fair and humane. Uh, and so recognizing that President Trump's policies were widely regarded as unfair and harsh and punitive and also not good for the country. Uh, he is going to take this time to review what happens. Uh, with immigration enforcement. And it's really just a period of 100 days. Now, the deputy director of the Domestic Policy Council for Immigration recently was quoted saying that this policy will restore the Refugee Administration's program, as you were mentioning, and enables the U.S. to return to its historic role as a leader and protection, protector for refugees. How is this policy being received by congressional leaders? Is it receiving bipartisan support? So, uh, first of all, I should say that the announcements regarding uh, what the pres President Biden plans to do on refugee policy, uh, some of them have not come yet, but they've been forecast and then used. What we do know is that the president's bill uh, it includes a package that would provide what he refers to as programs to address the root causes of migration from uh, the regions and the countries south of the U.S. border. Uh, these are by and large uh, supported uh, in Congress because they are designed to uh, build up the infrastructure of those countries, uh, particularly Central American countries like Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador that have been racked by not only poverty but extreme violence, uh, gang violence uh, that the state can't control, uh, domestic violence against women and children uh, that is, uh, is very frightening. 
uh, and people are fleeing from those countries for that reason. President Biden's approach is to say, look, we're not going to push these asylum seekers away from U.S. borders. Uh, we're going to make sure that we can assist them when they come here. Uh, President Trump's policies were inhumane and harsh, uh, and contrary to international and U.S. refugee law, the idea that you wouldn't let asylum seekers come to this country. That's not what Americans want. Americans, uh, when polled, consistently say they want to be able to maintain those American values of protecting people that are fleeing from violence. And so what President Biden is going to do is he says he's going to address the root causes of uh, the violence, the root cause of the economic uh, hardship in those countries, and build up their infrastructure so they can be more stable. What we are also anticipating President Biden will do is to introduce, uh, to announce his plans to reinvigorate the refugee resettlement program. And so this is basically the hallmark of the U.S. refugee and humanitarian program for decades now. The idea that there are conflicts, there is are people fleeing from violence across the globe now, and that the United States is going to open its arms, it's going to welcome those folks because we're a leader in humanitarian and global concerns, and we're going to make sure those people get protected because that's our role as a leading country uh, uh, around the planet. Uh, so that has not been announced yet, but we expect that to come soon. We have Republicans and Democrats in Congress who want to protect refugees. Um, many of the most prominent uh, leaders in the refugee field are, come from both sides in Congress. So we expect that there would be support for refugee protection. And how quickly can we see migrants and asylum seekers re-enter the United States? So the president has not uh, been uh, set specific timelines for what he's going to do there. Uh, some of the specific announcements he has made is to rescind one of the most reprehensible programs, bans, that the, uh, President Trump did, uh, something called the Migrant Protection Protocols uh, and also the Zero Tolerance Policy. Uh, both those are uh, initiatives that ban asylum seekers functionally from coming to the United States. Uh, and what President Biden has said he's going to do is to abolish those, to make the United States uh, restore its effective program to welcome asylum seekers, uh, but that he's also going to do that in a orderly way to make sure that our borders have secure methods of processing people to come to this country uh, so that it's safe for everybody. Uh, we don't want large numbers of people amassed at the border the way President Trump had set up. He kept families and children blocked living in Mexico in these squalid refugee-like camps with no support at all. Support at all. And we had stories that our attorneys who represent refugees were telling us of people that had not only fled from Central America, uh, but then been subject to additional violence in Mexico because President Trump wouldn't let them apply at our borders and our ports of entry. I guess it would be fair to say that we can expect specifics when it comes to regaining migrants re-entering the country, especially during the pandemic. Can What can we expect in the future when it comes to protecting the safety and the health of the United States with the coronavirus pandemic going on right now? Uh, well, that's a, a very good uh, question. Uh, and first of all, I think President Biden has made it very clear that his COVID response, the pandemic response is going to be science based, health based, and is going to be very carefully coordinated to make sure that the whole country is protected. One thing that we've already noticed he did, which was uh, uh, just in the first few days of his administration, was that he announced he's going to maintain certain restrictions on people traveling to the United States from a variety of countries, including countries from uh, European countries, even though President Trump had announced he was going to lift those restrictions on travel. But President Biden said, uh, no, not yet. It's not appropriate to make sure that the health and safety of the country, the welfare of Americans is protected. We're going to maintain certain restrictions on travel and entry to the country. So that's one example of how uh, President, Biden, President Biden's uh, overall package, not just immigration, but also the COVID response, are nicely integrated to make sure that the health and safety of the country comes first. Craig Chin with the American Immigration Lawyers Association. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you so much for having me.